Okay, welcome back. Look at me. I look a little bit more put together today. I've actually made some effort into making this video. Sometimes I want to get back on the track of doing videos, but I... I don't know. I get super obsessed when I haven't done something for... Well, I get super obsessed when I've done something for a while. But I also get super obsessed when I haven't done something for a while and then I have to like jump right back into it. It's like there's this little bit of perfectionism or OCD. It's OCD, to be honest. Um, where then I need to do this and then I need to do this and I need to set up these lights and I need to set up the camera and then I need to set up this and then I need to set up the laptop and the, the streaming thing or what the platform that I'm editing on or whatever I need to set up all these things which is normal that's what people do they set up things to perform certain tasks but then as I'm doing it I get these ideas and um, even the things that I can manage like my hair for example or makeup or the where there's chair is things that I can like you know just nicely fix um, I'll just leave it I just won't I'll just throw myself into it because if I don't do it. All right. So today I want to talk about like why. Okay. I don't know if a lot of people ask this. I don't know if like common people ask this. Well, I guess common people do ask this. But I feel like only people who seek psychic readings or want psychic readings ask this question. Actually, that's not true because people who don't or oppose to psychic readings, highly skeptical even more skeptical, like skeptical and so against them, I guess you would say, um, tend to ask this question. And the question is, w like, why can't you prevent stuff or you should prevent stuff? So if you like see danger coming in somebody's lives, you should, you should tell them. Or if you see some kind of tragedies happen, you should, you should say something. <sighs> I feel so exhausted. Like, I don't want, like, I do want to talk about it. I'd want to share, but it's just like, oh my gosh, can you guys stop with this? Like, relax, like these questions. Oh my gosh. Okay. So if I see something negative happening intuitively, like if I pick up that something negative is going to happen to somebody, then I should warn them or, 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 or tell them. Okay, but think about that. Let's. I feel like I feel like some of these things, the answers to these questions or the reality of these questions is very like logical. Sometimes I feel the it's it's a logical answer, but I guess maybe people already they already look at using your intuition as something mystical and magical and and so like random, I guess that. They also ask questions to contradict that, but then the questions that they're asking is also illogical. You're asking an illogical question about an illogical situation, and you want a logical answer. That's what that's what I feel is happening. But if you see something and you ask, I, oh no, okay, okay, let me let me okay, let me explain. If I if you see something happening negatively happening before it happens right like you you see like you're 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 driving and you're going down the road and you see like a baby run and see this wouldn't even be it okay so let's say you you okay i guess what i want to say without explaining is that a prediction is something that has not happened yet that you see happening and it has not happened yet so all the things that you would want to do to prevent it are also things that have not happened yet. So you can't stop somebody from going to a store where they're going to trip and fall if they haven't even decided to go to the store yet. Like they have not decided. You see, you, you, you see into the future and you see that when this person goes to the store, they're going to trip and fall, right? So now you want to prevent that. But the person has not even decided to go to the store and maybe in their current state, they don't even want to go to the store. So what are you preventing? So you could say, Hey, next time you go to the store, just be careful of that. This step, right? Be careful of that. So I guess that's what people are saying. It's like, can't you say things 
to somebody to help prevent the situation. Like you can't stop it, but can you help prevent the situation? Okay, sure. In that example, you could say, hey, if you decide to go to the store, um, be careful of this step. There's a step and I just have these feelings or visions that you're going to trip on it. Be careful of that step. Sure. But then that is to assume that the person is also open to the idea that they may eventually go to the store, right? The store is something people commonly go to. So it's not out of some crazy realm that somebody's going to think like, well, I'm not going to the store. I have no intention of going to it, but I'm going to go to the store one day. So thank you for the trip and fall, you know, warning. Thanks. But if it's things that the person has no ever like in their current moment idea of doing like somebody who never um flies like 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 travels and and or maybe they've traveled a lot in their life and they no longer travel they 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 don't they don't they don't find interest in travel they don't they're so content and and like that's not something that they're in their life and it's been years since they've done that and yeah, you can claim to say that certain things can happen that you don't know that you could you could end up having to take a flight. But having to take a flight is something that you still have to decide on. There's never going to be a situation where you like absolutely have to take a flight. I don't know, unless you're being um, convicted of a crime and you're being ex- extradited into another state or whatever. You know what I mean? Something totally <laughs> against your rules. Like if God forbid a a family member dies in another country and you need to go and handle these things. Um, The idea is that you should go, you should go. And you kind of, we might even say the word have to, but nowhere in there does you have to do it. It's not like if you don't, like life can't go on. You still have choices. You understand what I'm saying? Like there's still choices that one can make every day about something. And there's choices some, some one can make against something, right? So if the prediction is, I see you going on a flight um, and on this flight, you're going to lose your luggage and you're going to lose your wedding ring and it's going to be so horrible, Um, you know, so be cautious. Right. But the person's like, I never go on flights like like I, 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 I can't even value this warning because it's so like it, it's so irrelevant. It would be irrelevant to them in that situation, right? Like they wouldn't, it it would be irrelevant to them. So that's what a lot of predictions are when we see predictions. They're things that are happening in the future and they're things that are happening in the future that had, that probably make no sense in this current time, right? So it's invalid, I guess you would say, or it's just impractical or it's not applicable to be warning somebody of, of, of something. Let's say you're warning somebody that in the future, this is a a, a, a person who just got out of high school. Well, we wouldn't be reading. A, well, yeah, because they're 19 or 20. Somebody who's just got out of high school. So they're like 20. And we're saying in the future, when you're 45, you're going to break your arm. Because you are going to trip on a brick in a foreign country. Like, you know what I mean? It's just stuff that like now it's not going to make any sense to this individual. So what are you warning them about? Like, what do you want? Let life happen. Like, let life happen. You know, I'll talk about why you may see or how come people see things or, you know, again, this is not science. There's no science that I could say this is people people are able to predict things in the future based on this. This is, I could say my theories of why, but let's just go with the fact that let's, let's for the sake of this conversation, let's agree that people can see things in a far ahead future. Sometimes those things are so irrelevant to the situation. What are you warning them about? And also another thing is like certain things are out of just because you you could see something happening. So maybe I could see a train and I see that the train is going to go off the rails. And so I don't know the mechanisms of a train. 
I don't know the spidgets and the gidgets and the widgets and the lidgets and the compressors and the just in the the, 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 the the things. I don't know the things of a train. Maybe in a vision, I would see an object and I can describe what I see, but I don't know what that object does or whatever. I'm not an ex, I'm not a conductor. I'm not a conductor of trains, right? I'm not a train engineer. I'm, I'm, what would it be? A locomotive engineer? I'm not a locomotive engineer. A locomotive? That's a train, right? You know, I've always heard the word locomotive, and I think I've always heard it being applied to train, but I never, like, why? Locomotive. I don't know. That's something to look up. Anyways, a train engineer, right? So I would say I see the train going off the rails, right? Who am I going to warn? Okay, all the people who are getting on the train, I have to warn all of them. But now I have to warn all them, but also be so convincing that they accept the images that I see in my head that don't have a factual premise. And again, images that you see in your head, psychic visions or images that you see in your head. When we, in our, in our world, when we communicate with other people, we cannot see inside each other's heads. Well, I mean, let's just go with that, right? So the way to communicate what's in my head to communicate to you so you conceive it, that's where facts come in or tangible things come in or commonalities, right? But think of it like a director. When a director's thinking of a movie or all these, or all these shots of a movie or whatever, he has them in his head. How does he translate what's in his head into the, the camera operator, the DP, the, the AD, the actors, the, the, like, how does he get them to know exactly, like, understand what says that? He could use very descriptive words, right? He could use very descriptive words, but what he uses is, is a script, right? He uses a script. He uses a certain language that can, it's common among the individuals with like something that they can like tangibly see, right? So if I'm trying to warn people, the train's going to go off the track. What tangible things do I have to warn them? Nothing. All I can hope is that they just believe me. And why would these people just believe me? Now they could if they want to, but it is a controlling and I dare say narcissistic approach to assume that I say I'm psychic, I say I'm this, and then I assume, I, I demand that people believe me. That it's a, I say this, so I think you should believe me because of who I am. No, like that's not how it the world goes, right? Even if I want them to believe me, I need to be better at communicating this. I need to show some things and all that. So the people who don't go on the train because they do believe me, that's their autonomy. That's them choosing to say, Hey, I, I'm those individuals who are choosing to not go on the train are saying, I'm deciding, I make an autonomous decision for myself based on this information. I know it's not factual. So I'm going, I'm, I'm going with the odds that (laughs) something is going to happen to the train and I shouldn't get on it. But everybody else who gets on the train, it's kind of like, well, like, why not? (laughs) Because of, because of me, why not? You know, like, like how, even if they wanted to believe me, how could you conceptualize what's going to happen? If we live in a world where everybody just believes what people say when it comes to matters of their own life. So think of, think of that slowly. To just believe what somebody says when it's concerning their own lives or their story? Sure. I think we should always give somebody the the belief, like just the discerning, like, okay, you said this happened to you. It, it doesn't concern me and it's whatever. Sure. Like, why not? There's that whole thing about victims. Just, just like, why? I think it's kind of like when a victim tells its story, like, why not? Why not just let that person tell the story? When it comes to the point where they have to prove their story because it involves someone else, I think so. Let's 
hear the facts. Let's see how things add up, right? But if it has nothing to do with you or it doesn't really concern you, why why not, right? But opposite, I'm telling them that they shouldn't get on this train, that they should void their ticket, they should change their plans, they should make all these changes in their lives just on a belief of me. Yeah, if they if they decide to go on the train, why not? Like you get it. You understand? So see where I'm going with this warning people about what they should do in about a future that hasn't happened. One, sometimes it's so irrelevant. And two, my next point, this point that I'm also making is that what? Not just that it's not factual, but how in which can I communicate visions in my head so the other person can discern and 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 make a choice themselves as well. Like if I say the train's going to go off the tr- the rails because there's a big boulder sitting on the train on the track up ahead, people can go and actually assert that and and find that fact, right? Okay. But when it comes to certain things that don't have any tangible things and now you as as a psychic, I don't take offense. I don't take offense when nobody believes me. I'm like, well, well, there's some things in the site in the scientific community that I I'm just like, why don't they know that they should know we've been saying, but whatever. But I don't really take offense if I want to tell somebody, well, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't warn people. I'll get to that. Um, but if I were to say something, I don't take offense that someone doesn't believe me or whatever, because it's in my head. Like I know what I see. I know what I'm seeing. I'm describing what I'm seeing. I'm describing my experience. Maybe my experience is ahead in the future. Maybe my experience is something about the past or the present. Like it's my experience. I don't need, I don't need you to believe me all the time, right? Unless it's like something I need to do with you. And if it's something that I need to do with you or I need you to do with me, that I need you to believe me, I'm going to find some better ways or I am going to ask for that permission. Please, I would like you to trust me. But even asking somebody to trust you is kind of like a, go ahead, ask the request, but you can't expect someone to trust you. You know what I mean? You can't expect you. You would have to have built a bond with somebody or give them reasons. Anyways, okay, going on. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if people don't get on that train, the locomotive, the train. Why was it? Anyways, the, the, if they don't get on that train, sure, that's them making it for themselves. And if people decide to get on the train, then then whatever, right? Okay, so there's that part. And then also, I was kind of tying into early, kind of saying how I don't know the technical things of a train or how a train works or what would happen or how, even if this train was headed for disaster, I don't know how it, which I may not know, like I might pick up something intuitively, but it does not necessarily mean that I know exactly how that process should run um, to stop the train or to cancel the train. I don't know what the protocols are going to have to be. So me saying to someone, okay, so there's the, the, the passengers. Okay. We talked about that, but let's say, okay, you can't warn, you warn the passengers or you can't warn the passengers. So you would call the train company or the locomotive engineer. What am I trying to explain to him? Like, even if, let's say he believed me, let's say he believed me. I don't know what the protocols are <clears throat> to prevent something or change something or those courses and the actions. Let's say he believes me. I find it interesting, but let's say he just believes me. He believes that the train is going to run off course. See, the thing is, if somebody, if I say to the locomo, the locomo, the, the engineer, <laughs> conductor, hey, the train is going to go off the rails, right? Um, he could believe me, but what actions could he take? He could um, double check the, the, the mechanics of the train, do another security check, you know, radio to the track people, do, do all he could do. He could take extra steps to be more cautious and have precautions and, and be more aware when he's conducting the train to kind of slow down or really be more perceptive. Okay. Right. So that's a, again, just like the earlier explanation I said, when you go to the store 
Oh my gosh, I was, I'm recording this. I'm not live. I'm not trying to go live yet. Although I'll be going live too. But I'm not trying to go live yet. And I just went to look at how long I was talking. And beside the time it says live. And I was like, oh my God, I'm talking to people lively. But I'm not. It just meant like it's a live recording. Okay. <laughs> that made me nervous. Do you guys like my little Christmas going on here? We've got a lot of Christmas going on here. I love the traditions of Christmas. I love the traditions. Okay. So it's also like how I said earlier, when the person's going to the store and, or I'm warning them about, Hey, when you go to the store, be careful. There's this, I, I see like a tripping hazard. It's kind of like that. It's like the, the engineer conductor. This is something that they do daily. Um, experiences of, um, how would you say? Like, all the things that could happen is part of the training. Like if the train goes off the rails, if this is that, if there's a sickness, if there's this, if there's that, whatever, they're hip to that. So a warning would make sense to them. You know what I mean? If, if they choose to, but it, 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 it's more um, applic applicable, applicable, right? Okay. So he could do all those things, but if he were to say, okay, I'm going to stop, I'm not going to, I'm going to cancel the train. It's like, what do you have to do to cancel a train? Who do you have to call to con to? Do you have to then make a report? You have to say why a psychic told me, um, or I don't feel confident running the train, like whatever. There's a whole bunch of protocols that you need to do. Maybe the process of those protocols would not prevent the time framing. You know what I mean? Maybe those protocols take hours. And I'm seeing the train have a thing in less than hours. Like, you know what I mean? There's a whole bunch of things that the world and time and things have to happen between when, where you are in the present and where you are in the future. So, and then another thing, and then another thing that I, I talked about, or I wanted to mention is that if I see something happening in the future, right? Like this train example is a really good one. It might be, I don't know. I might change it, but we're sticking with that. If I see something happening and I painted one set of nails, <laughs> well, repainted one. But. Okay, let's see. I have these muscle pains in my back here from being sick. Oh, like, like, I don't know. Anyway, so... Um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I lost my train of thought while we're talking about trains. Okay. So if I see something happening in the future, like let's say a train breaking down, right? And going off the rails. The train breaks down. The train doesn't just bump something or whatever. The train breaks down and goes off the rails, right? Let's say I, I see that, right? And I see that happening. Okay, so I see that happening and I see that because there's a spigot, a spigot that is broken or comes loose and it's missed, right? Missed in the inspections, right? Or there was a weird storm and it broke the spigot loose and the spigot is the thing that's going to cause a tragedy. Okay, so I see that happening in the future. So let's say it is January and I, let's say the month is January and I see that happening in May, right? I see that spigot. Okay. So between January and May, something has has to happen with the spigot. Okay. There are people who work with this train and their jobs are the spigots and all these things and whatever and those kind of things, right? So sometimes something that you see in the future is not ignorant to the professionals of people that are a part of that industry, right? So I see something happening to the train and let's say something is going to happen to the train. The people who work with the train or the conductors in here could also have that perception. They're like, something's going to happen to that train. Like I, 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 you know, we checked the spigot or the company that we got the spigots from, they, whatever. And I just, because they're more, they're more connected to it. So they could have also their own intuitions or whatever insights and stuff like that. So they could have protocols already in to say, it seems working fine, but we know. So we're going to, 
from now on when the train is only going to travel this much miles and then we're going to have to do another inspection this much miles and then we're going to have to do another inspection so if i go hey i see the train going off the rails they could probably go we see that happening too and we're working and doing everything diligently that we can to solve that problem you know what i mean like a future that if we're going with intuition is a real thing right if I see something or someone intuitive sees something happening to a sector, a set of people, and then we'll call that it's happening, it's going to happen. That sector of those specific people could be also hip to it. Like it's something that's going to happen. Like if you don't take care of your roof, your property, and, and you start getting holes in your roof, the a psychic could come into the neighborhood and be like, I see. Well, maybe they don't come into the neighborhood, but they could read this neighborhood and be like, I see a house with a roof caving in. And they've never been to this neighborhood. They don't know this neighborhood. They just intuitively pick up that I see a house and the roof collapses, right? And then you go to that neighborhood, right? The psychic doesn't know. They're, they're not connected. It's a psychic reading, right? They're not connected. They don't know. She just picks that up. And then you go to that neighborhood and the people in that neighborhood go, yeah, we see it too. We see that happening because, you know, the roof and they've had problems and whatever, whatever. And we've been getting a lot of rain and snow and whatever. And that, you know what I mean? So just because you see something doesn't mean that you're the only one in the world that has that information. And not only that you're the only one in the world or, or, or not only that other people have that information, the powers that can manage or control or prevent or help or execute that tragedy the people that have those powers they also probably you're probably not telling them anything that they don't know you understand you're probably not telling them anything that they don't know they probably already know so this hero heroistic hero heroistic <laughs> you can tell of when a person reads a lot and doesn't talk a lot because they know a lot of words, but they don't know how to say them out loud or pronounce them. <laughs> so this idea that like a psychic is going to be the hero and because they see things, they can prevent things and stuff like that. Come on. Like, again, even if you don't, even if you do believe in psychics and all that, like, think of it logically. How do you prevent something from happening? that hasn't happened. You could only like warn or say some things, but you can't really. And again, your warning or you're saying something is now you're trying to be dependent on those people are just going to believe you, like just going to believe you. And if you feel that you have knowledge that can help somebody, like I know what the spigot is. I know what that special thing it needs, right? It's, it's more than a prediction. It's an actionable thing because you can go to these engineers and you can draw it. You can explain it. You can, you can diagram it. You can do these. And these are what you call great ideas, inventions. This is how inventions and great ideas come up. Some people have an idea of something and it comes up in their mind and they see it and they're able to whatever. So like inventors are psychic, you know, right? Eh, 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 you good? You get it? They were able to take something they see and put it in tangible effect. They didn't just say, well, some of them just said, we're going to have um, telecommunications through air signals, <laughs> Wi-Fi, Tesla, right? Um, and, and people are like, whatever, stop your nonsense. I, I mean, maybe I believe you, but how? And you know what he did? He went like this. And he actually did the work and did all these things and, and provide and made this thing and partnered with other people to, to create this thing, right? So if you could see in the future and you see something negative, it's like this, this I'm going to tell people and help them and save them. And if a psychic can see in the future, why aren't they warning people? They're not warning people because who's going to listen? How do you warn somebody from something that's never happened again? You can only hope and anticipate that they would listen to you. But how do you build that trust between you and a possible individual stranger? You don't. You would already have to have an original bond. So there's a very ego, ego thing about 
the control that a psychic may have over somebody's life to prevent something from happening. You know what I mean? Come on now. Let's be real. Um, another thing, why I don't, why there, there's many reasons why I don't warn people when I see things, when I start seeing things about random people, maybe sometimes, but let me tell you, like, I, I think people think when you say you're highly intuitive and again, I blame a lot of people in the psychic industry for kind of creating this monster of these delusional ideas and this 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 ridiculousness um but if i'm highly intuitive right there's this thing that people think that i care deeply about their life now this is gonna sound really mean like i i would see something tragic to you and not care what i mean is that my world is not focused on all the tragedies of every other individual. Like, you're not, like, it's, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that absorbed or obsessed in the life of every other individual that I feel like I have to run around like some magic fairy preventing things or, or saying things. Like, my focus is not on that. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, when people think like, oh, psychics are always, they know what you're thinking. And no, I'm not, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe I can get some intuitive mentions of what you might actually be thinking about something or what you might actually be feeling. But why am I paying attention? You think I'm really paying, you think I'm really paying attention to that? You know what I'm paying attention to? My nails and how I didn't get the one other hand done. I'm paying attention to the things that I want on my Christmas list and the things that I want to accomplish. I'm paying attention to the goals in my career that I want to execute. I'm paying attention to the actual people in my life. There's not a lot that I actually care for or have some kind of connection with. I'm paying attention to whether or not I'm going to actually do the dishes today. <laughs> I am, but paying attention to how much I don't like dishes and I don't have a dishwasher, <gasps> yes, <gasps> and paying attention to, yeah, all my goals in my life, I'm paying attention to the, the uncomfortable interaction I had with a, a, an agent yesterday or somebody, the interact, the horrible interaction I had with the Walmart person or the horrible interaction I had with a loan officer or those kind of things. I'm reading those people because they're my things that have to do with me. I'm paying attention to maybe teachers or support workers that my daughter has to go to that I, I got a bad vibe of or I didn't like something and I have, I'm paying attention intuitively navigating those situations. My intuition is for me. Your intuition is for you. It's to help you navigate the world and communicate in the world where you choose to. When you pick up random things off of other people, sure, that happens. But it's also like energy, this is the theoretical part. All, all of this is really theoretical. But if energy is like just a pool of like like air, and like air, everything's happening. Something's happening to somebody in Australia. Something's happening to someone in New York. Something's happening to somebody in Asia somewhere. Like all, all these things are happening at one time. It's no wonder that sometimes that your frequency might hit that frequency and you pick up something because it's accessible. Like it's there. Anything you would want to connect to can be accessible energetically. It's just, we're all in, it's like a pool. It's like a swimming pool. We're all in the swimming pool. All That water is touching all of us, right? So I might pick up something off of someone that I don't have a connection with, but it's not so much like, Oh, that's because you have to give you them a message. It's not, it's not like the angel, angel Gabriel. Who's the one who brought the baby Jesus? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a Christian, but there's somebody who there's somebody who brought the baby Jesus. There's somebody who brought the baby Moses. There's somebody who picked the ISIS. There's always some kind of angel that came and told the world that there was some baby. You know? Okay. It's not like that. It's not like you got some information. 
So now it's like you are the the power of this internet. You just click to that frequency that that in, information is available to you. Now, if you gain that inf- information and you want to share it, again, share it with the intent that they don't need to believe you. They don't need to believe you. They don't need to do do what you say. And also, you now are bringing up something that may be irrelevant to that particular person. So now you've brought their, you've invited them into your world of stuff. You cause that. So now you are causing this anxiety about the train. You are causing this anxiety about tripping the step. You cause that. They were having a nice, fine life. <laughs> and you cause that anxiety. So you would also need to be responsible for that that thing and nurture that thing and help them through. And if you just want to give information, think people are going to accept it and then move on with your life, you got it wrong. Because now you've told somebody something and it's it's very controlling. It's like, I'm going to sit here and tell somebody all the scary things in their life and then be like, okay, go, go, you know? <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I'm causing the fear and now I'm the person who needs to soothe the fear. I mean, that's the manipulation of this whole psychic thing, isn't it? That they cause this, they would cause an anxiety. And then now you are dependent on that person to soothe the anxiety. Stop that. Stop your nonsense. Stop it. I think that is so dangerous. I I'm going rogue. Like I've been going rogue for a long time with this whole psychic intuition thing. A lot of people just have intuition. They get information or insight within their their conscious mind, whether it's visions or feelings or words or anything. It's creative. It's a creative process. A lot of people think like that and get inspiration and, and feel that energy and stuff like that. And some of us, I've chosen to sell that part of myself to other people for their things. I have just chosen. It's me. I'm the intuitive person. I'm intuitive for reasons that I'm intuitive. I'm, I think the way for things it's, it's about me. It's about you. If you are intuitive, whatever, it's about you, you, it's about you navigate your life, get your life to as perfection as, as you want using your intuition. And then what you're doing, you're selling that aspect of yourself to someone else to see if they can benefit from it. If I know somebody has really, really, really good handwriting and I want to send out a whole bunch of Christmas cards with good handwriting, that good handwriting benefits them. They are able to write things that people clearly understand, that that makes people find some inspiration and creativity in. They're able to do that. It's a benefit. It's something for them that they are now choosing to sell that to myself. So I would pay that person to handwrite some some nice calligraphy letters for me. That's what it's like. So this whole thing about, oh, you you now, uh, for somebody to become dependent on you for a thing that you do, you gotta we gotta be cautious of that, right? I I have I have stories upon stories of times where I use my intuition days after days, even just yesterday, even just recently, just days, even with a package. That's been late. I I had a little vision about the thing as I bought it, and I I bought it anyways because I want it. And I did visualize this. this some complications were going to happen, but I still chose to go with it because I realized there are complications, but I realized that there are things that I could work through, or we can work through. The post office can work through, and it's just the nature of whatever. But I did see that now. Many times in my life, my intuition has served me well. um, And that's what it's for, to help me navigate my life. And one of the things that my intuition has done to serve me well was that it allowed me to become highly independent financially, spiritually, mentally, psychologically on my own by using that skill of mine to sell, to offer to other people to sell. It's like, I'm good at baking bread and people want bread and I want to provide for my family. So I make bread good to the market. They use it and whatever. None of those people, they, they purchase the bread (laughs) and they go home. They don't, after they've eaten the purchase of bread, come back to me and be like, Oh my gosh, I cannot survive 
without I, I cannot survive. I need you to also cook this bread for me. I need you to also put it in the oven for me. I need you. I bought this bread from you, but this bread is like, I, I can't do anything for you. No, take the bread. <laughs> and you figure out how to heat it up and you do that. Like that, that's a service that I'm providing. Now I'm saying this very like raw, but I mean, there is a value that I get an emotional value that I get when my intuition, the thing that I'm doing well has made someone else, like they benefited, like they didn't just buy it. They actually like took it into their lives and and they loved it. Just like, again, just like baking bread. So anyway, so it goes back to telling people about themselves or about tragedies in their lives. Like, again, if you're going to go around telling people tragic things about their lives for no, no good reason, other than you think that you have some magical authority over other people. Like you are responsible for other people's highs and lows and lows and highs. And to, and and to do that, you don't. And if you think that you, you are, so you go share that information, then you also need to be responsible for the highs and lows and everything that they go through. Right. And you have to understand, you have to also be responsible for the fact that people are not going to receive information the way that you intended to send it out. And you can't judge them on that. You have to know that's what's going to happen. They're going to get mad at you or they're going to get upset or they're going to they're going to blame you or they're going to do that. You got to be responsible for that if that's what you choose to do. I don't. I don't. I answer the questions people ask. If you ask me something that's saying that you want to know, if you don't ask me, I don't. We're not like that's that's your life. And when it comes to all the tragedies in life and if somebody can, you know, help or prevent a tragedy. um. Sure. But is that the role that you want to take? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. But is that the role that you want to take? You want to take this role of preventing things, tragedies from happening to people. I think we could think a little bit deeper when it comes to that. If you want to prevent people from getting sick from not having clean drinking water, and you see it and you want to prevent it, there's a whole process and there's a whole efforts that you can do to do that. If you want to prevent people from certain type of car accidents, um, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why people get like, there, you know, there's a lot of parts, but maybe you could choose a part. Maybe it's to become a driving instructor. There, there's so many things that you can do effort, effort wise. I think it's just a lazy A lazy thing to just tell somebody something and then expect that they'll listen. There's nowhere in life that we do that. Even in schooling or teaching, we don't just tell children stuff and expect they'll listen. We teach them it and and help them understand it so they can do it themselves and understand the nature. And we make efforts and we do teachers, teachers develop lessons and routines and things to help navigate that. They don't just go, hey, do this. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I do that to my child and say, hey, just do it. I don't often do that. I just say, hey, just listen to me right now. I'll explain it later. (laughs) I have that. But I actually try to explain everything to my child. Um, So it wouldn't be like, just, just do it. Just, just believe in me. And, and I, I happen to have a child who doesn't, she's very, I mean, she, she, she's a child. So there's a lot of things that she'll just believe, but She's more of a personality that doubts everything. (laughs) Highly skeptical. Like I could tell her something that's so true and she'd be like, "Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if you know that. (laughs) Um, Rain clouds means it's going to rain because when the clouds get together, they get condensed and it, it, it creates a reaction that ends up drawing precipitation. I don't know. I mean, you could be right, but I don't know. I'll, I'll look it up myself. <laughs> that, that's, that's my, like, everything is no. Um, or she, she would, she would give her, her, oh, she's like, I don't know. That doesn't seem right. Maybe it's because they do this and whether she's wrong or right. The point is that she's trying to come up with her own ideas of something or trying to make sense of things in her lo- own life. So again, it's just nature for people to not Again, believing somebody when it has nothing to do with you and they're just telling their story, sure. 
But when it has, it's almost like when they want you to create an action, we are not mindlessly controlled by other individuals. We allow ourselves to be controlled by other individuals, but that's where you need the autonomy. Again, the autonomy, right? So as a psychic, you were able to see things. So you should be able to prevent things. Prevent what, mother? Prevent what and why and how? How there's a way how, but I think I think at the same time we have to understand it's humans and you can't control another human, meaning you can't tell them what to do. You can't you could tell them what to do, but you can't expect them. You can't expect them they're gonna do what you want them to. You can't expect that they're gonna think the way you want them to think. You can't expect that they're gonna be grateful for what you think they're gonna be grateful. You can't expect these things. And not only can't you, you can't, you shouldn't expect these things, the same things. Humans are very complex. Like humans are complex. If you think a human being is that simplistic that you say something, they do something, it means something. No, there's more nuances to that. So broaden your mind. Okay. Broaden your mind when you think like, well, they're psychic. They should, they should have known that certain disasters were going to come up on this world or there were certain restrictions that was going to cause people from not being able to go outside or have limitations on them leaving their house for months and months and children can't go to school. Why didn't the psychic people tell us? Okay, would you have believed it? Would you have believed it? And even if you have believed it, would you have done all the things that we're going to happen because of it, just because somebody said, it. no, stop your nonsense. Stop it. Stop your nonsense. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And what was, what was the psychic supposed to do? Fly to wherever the virus started and catch the virus and lock it into a headlock. Like this is like some superhero stuff. <laughs> like the psychic sees something and then he runs to the other land and he need crab grabs the virus and he catches it. And then they go into this rustle and tussle. The psychic is on top, choking out the virus, but the virus begins to win and the psychic gets sick. Oh no, but now there's a mystical fairy that comes in and she sprinkles her fairy dust and now all the world is safe. Like, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not gonna happen. So, I mean, and think of it in your life. Have you ever tried telling a child something? Well, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not comparing a grown adults to children, but I'm just saying, have you ever tried to tell the child, don't put your cup there, it's going to fall over? <laughs> it's not. Don't your, move your cup towards the middle of the table if you put it so close to the, it's not, I want my cup splash. Have you ever even just tried telling a friend, a girlfriend, I don't think you should date that guy or a, a guy friend. I don't think that girl's cool girl. I don't think that girl's good for you. She's, I, I think she's trouble. I think she's trouble. I think you should, you should, you should, you shouldn't, you shouldn't take her out. No, I, 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 I think it's trouble. I think you should call this quit. Have you ever tried doing that? Like telling somebody about something? No, even if they kind of believe you, Again, you just got like, so what's the point? I mean, you, again, you could say it. I, I think that girl's, yeah, I think that girl's trouble. I think she's going to, she's going to rob you. <laughs> she's going to steal your shoes, bro. She's going to steal your sweater. <laughs> That's what these kind of girls do. They steal your sweater and then they sleep in it. Now it's a sleep sweater. You'll never be able to wear that sweater in the day now. Now it's all sleep. It's a sleep sweater. She's going to do that. She's going to, I don't know. I don't know. You shouldn't, you should, don't, don't lend her your sweater, bro. And you could say, I think, I think that's true. She might, I, I believe that to be true. She might take the sweater. I do, but you know what? I want to give her the sweater. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to let her have the sweater for the night. <clears throat> you can't, you can't, you, we can't tell people things like warning people sometimes it's fruit fruitless you know you can only give somebody the insight of what you see especially if they ask but if you give 
So again, I think it's just really that the reason why you're not using your psychic ability, your psychic superpowers to warn people of tragedies is because to prevent a tragedy, you're going to need the actions and the cooperation with those involved. And you can't assume that they're going to cooperate you with you on something that you just came up with in your, in your, in your vibe. And the idea is that, well, I'm, I, I just got this vision. So it feels like because I got this vision, it feels like I should do something. If you sit quietly and you really work on your sensory extension or meditation, you're going to pick up a lot of mother. You're going to pick up a lot of, a lot of things, a lot of things, a lot of good things, a lot of bad things. You're going to pick up on a lot of things. There is so much going on in this world. Bad, great, tragic. There's so much. So if you open up your sensory perception, even just a little bit, you're going to receive a lot of stuff. So when your sensory perception opens or, or certain things happen that invoke some insight, inspire some insight, trigger some insight, that's just a little window. That's just a moment that's happening to you. You are experiencing a moment of the window opening and you could see something that's going on in the world, but it closes shut. So if you've only seen a little piece of thing, so it's not the world is calling on you to do something. <laughs> well, I mean, creativity, the world could be calling on you to be open up more and use that side of yourself. But what I'm saying is that you just had an experience where you felt something or saw something or dreamt something. You just had that. You just had an experience of the, the, the veil, the psychic people like to call it, the veil opening. If you have your window shut, can't see me. If you have your drape shut all the time, you're not going to pick up anything. You're not going to see the birds. You're not going to see the weather. You're not going to see the wind. You're not going to see the flowers. You're not going to see the people. You're not going to see anything. But if those window, window opens just a little bit and you see something, and then you go, oh my God, I'm being called on to do something. <laughs> it's kind of like, open it up more. You know, all these things. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's not that, it's not that you're not appointed. I don't want to discern anybody who, or dismiss anybody who feels like the moment the window opened, they were inspired to act, inspired to do something. Absolutely. But remember, you are inspired to do something. You are choosing to take some action. This, this is, this is something that you are doing. And if you become, as you do this, you become dependent on other people or it has to work because of other people, then I mean, were you called? Were you really called? It sounds like you were just asked to tell 10 of your friends to help you. <laughs> you weren't really called. You know what I mean? So even in like creativity or inventors or whatever, it's like whatever they're doing in the moment that window opens, they see something and then they're inspired to do something and they want to take an action and they want to do something. They are doing something on their own. Maybe it collabs with somebody who's also doing that thing. Maybe it is for you to speak of something in hopes that it inspires somebody. But it's something that you're doing. It's an experience that you're having. Intuition is an experience that you're having. Intuition is a natural function of every single human being on earth. Because somebody says they're psychic does not make them any better than any other human being on earth. It just makes that person saying that this is the career that they chose to do it, or this is the aspect of themselves that they wish to monetize, to, to utilize. OK, there is no psychic God out there. And when you're a psychic, you're like, oh, my gosh, every it's like it's like every human being can walk. Every human being can run. I mean, nuances, but a human being itself is designed to be able to walk and to run. OK, so one human being who decides to be an, a trainer 
and train people in basketball, track and field, or some sports that require running does not make them a better human because of it. It just says that's what they chose to do. And you know what makes them a good human? Not a better human, but you know what makes them a good human? Because they've chose to focus in on something and utilize it and spread out the benefit of what they can do to other people. You understand? A doctor's a good person because he chose or chose to doctor. A lawyer is a good person because he chose to lawyer. Uh, a, a salesperson is good because they've chose to sell me stuff. Uh, a plumber is good because he chose to plumb. You understand? But these are these are things. So intuition is something that all human beings have. Yes, the level or the experiences or how the brain works can make it different or whatever. But think of it as a person who's highly intuitive that aspect of themselves is just something that's more concentrated, focused on or whatever. Okay. There's other, they're still a human being. Okay. They are still responsible and part of our social world. Okay. Just because they're highly intuitive doesn't mean that they can force people to believe them, make people believe them, or that people should be, 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 believing in them for things. You know what I mean? You put out some good work and people are going to pay for it. You know, that's how my career goes. I put out consistent work with my clients. I answer their questions to the best of my intuition. I make sure that I'm intuitively connected and using that side of myself. I make sure I study that side of myself and understand how it works within me. I also use it within my own life, my own life. So all these things, this this part of me that benefits in me in my life, I make sure that it's nice, tight, and correct, and whatever. And then, so when somebody purchases it, they're getting the best of that too. That's all. That's all I'm doing. What they do with it, that's their their that's their their thing. Okay, but I'm not appointed to run around and save the world. No psychic is appointed to run around and 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 try to save the world in that regard. Okay, so yeah. That's my spiel on why I'm not in the business. This I'm not in the business of warning you about things you don't ask about. You understand? You understand? There's a lot of negative things going on in this world. I'm not running around trying to warn people. What I can say that I try to do is that I try to be highly empathetic. Um. I try to understand human behavior as much as possible. I try to help people understand themselves, help people build autonomy and confidence within themselves. That way they can make choices as best as they can because some things just happen to you. Um, some things just happen to you and it's it's prevention is... Some things just happen to you, but to make choices that if something isn't going good, you can know, you can more readily be aware of that. You can readily be aware of your value of things. You can readily be aware of what you're capable of or what your challenges are. You can be confident in what um, your, your internal feelings and how they're, ex- they're manifesting externally, like how your, how your inner thoughts are actually creating your be be aware of that stuff so then you can all be warned of your own future you can be the warning of your own future you could say oh my gosh that's going to happen and then you make choices to switch you warn your warn yourself as a psychic i'm offering my insight i'm 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 providing the thing that i do with myself that's that's good for me and i'm packaging that and i'm trying to provide it for other contexts, um, for you. Um, but that's all I can do. All that's all I can do. I think I would love a world where everybody's really intuitive within themselves and with others and, and, and can depend on that, rely on that. Would that put me out of a career? No, because there, it's about perspective. So I may be highly intuitive in this direction and have this perspective, but another perspective is something that we always will benefit from perspective, other, other ways of thinking of things, bring stuff is going to always get lost in your subconscious to yourself. 
So to to have somebody else help you bring it bring it about. So that's the nature of the world. But this dependence on somebody else's the, the, this 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 dependence on somebody else, and this also idea that because I'm intuitive, I hold this power over your life because I could see what's going to happen and you can't. Meh, 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 meh. No. Have you ever warned somebody about something and they actually listened to you and that your warning actually benefited or helped or or changed the course of something? Not psychically, but have you ever said that's that thing is going to make you sick? You're going to eat that shrimp and I don't think it's going to go good for you. And then they go, okay, I'm not going to eat it. And then later you find out the shrimp is bad. Have you ever in your life, psychic or not, have you ever had a moment where you've actually just told somebody about something and warned something about it and they actually heeded your advice and it actually turned out to be a wonderful situation, a preventative situation or the opposite? Have you ever told somebody something? (laughs) And they did not heed your advice. And then it turned out tragic. And you had an internal moment of, well, either you had an internal moment of, I told you so, or you had an internal moment of like, geez, I really wish that didn't happen. And you just feel sorrow. Let me know. Let me know all those experiences. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in and listening to another em- the empathetic life of Psychic Media Monique Empath. I am Psychic Media Monique Empath. And I hope you enjoyed this podcast or this video if you're watching on the YouTube. And yes, we'll be doing free live streams soon once I get back into the flow. But you guys understand what it's like when I stop doing something. And then all the obsessive behaviors start happening before I have to do it. So but it will be back. But yeah, thank you for listening to this podcast. Let me know your thoughts. Bye. I want to keep filming because it's like I finally got this down and then I... I feel like I look good and said it all up good and I'm like now I'm gonna like all pack it up and then to like bring it out the next day is gonna be like oh gosh and then I'm gonna like I don't know ah let's not get into let's not get into me